Uh, these are topic tests which should be taken once uh, you've covered the basic concepts of a topic. So uh, going through the uh, theory of the topic, doing some practice about it, then to check whether you are exam ready with respect to the topic or not. Uh, these topic tests are designed for that. Ideally, once you've done the topic test, uh, you should refer to this video. So in this video, I'll talk about the overall analysis of the test and um, the overall analysis of each question, you know, uh, which ones should have been attempted, why they could have been attempted and the kind of time that you should take for each question. If you like the test uh, uh, and the video, there are more than 200 such topic tests available on, on our Android app, topic-wise. So just download the app, uh, the link for which is in the description below. And you can use that to uh, continuously uh, gauge your preparation. As far as this test is concerned, this was a test on the topic simple interest, compound interest in the app. This is test number two. Overall analysis for this test would be it was an easy to moderate test. And therefore, out of 10, almost seven, seven net questions could have been attempted correctly. The overall time to attempt the entire test should be somewhere around 18 to 21 minutes. This includes the time that you will take to uh, attempt questions, which you're not able to do. So overall test attempt time 18 to 21 minutes in which we are getting about net net seven correct and the rest either leaving or getting wrong as, as it happens. Uh, moving on to the questions. Question number one. Question one says, uh, if 12,000 is divided into two parts such that the simple interest in the first part for three years at 12% is equal to simple interest in the second part for 4.5 years at 16% per annum, the greater part is, suppose the greater part is X, the or one of the parts is X, the other part is 12 minus X, 12,000 minus X. So this is in thousand rupees. On this, we are getting a simple interest for three years at 12%. So principal into rate into time upon 100 will be the simple interest. On the second, we are getting principal into rate into time upon 100 simple interest. According to the question, they are equal. So if we uh, equate them, this gets cancelled. We get 36x is equal to 12 minus x into uh, 4.5 into 6. 4.5 into 6 will be 4.5 into 2 into 8. Uh, 9 into 8, which is 72. 36 and 72 cancel and therefore x is equal to 24 minus 2x or 3x is equal to 24 which means x is equal to 8. Clearly, one of the part is 8,000 and therefore the other part will be 4,000. The greater part is 8,000. Basic simple interest based question. Just e write the equation for simple interest and equate. Therefore, an easy question should not take more than about 90 seconds to solve. Uh, uh, definitely a question that should be looked at in exams or a time test. A money lender borrows money at 4% per annum, pays the interest at the end of the year. He lends it at 6% per annum compound interest, compounded half yearly and receives the interest, interest at the end of the year. In this way, he gains 104.5 a year, the amount of money he borrows. Now, if we look at the money that he borrows, he has to pay 4% of that. Therefore, 4% of the principal is to be paid. Since it is one year, it does not matter whether this is compound or simple. In the second case, where he lends the money, he gets 6% per annum compounded half yearly. So for the first six months, he'll get 3% rate. For the next six months, he'll get 3% interest on the accrued uh, amount. So if we look at this, this is successive percentage change. And therefore, the yearly overall interest will be 3 plus 3 plus 3 into 3 upon 100. If we start at 100 rupees, this becomes 103. And then on 103, we'll get 3%. So the effective rate will be 6.09%. So the amount of money that the person will get is 6.9% of P and the amount of money that he has to pay back is 4% of P. The difference is what he, he will earn, which is given as 104.5 rupees. So this becomes 2.09% of P is equal to 104.50, which means um, 5. Uh, 2.09 upon 100 is equal to 104.50 or P is equal to 104.50 multiplied by 100 upon 2.09. So I'm writing this as 209 into 100. Now clearly 209 to 5 will be 1045, a 0 from here 
and therefore the principal comes out to 5,000. The amount of money he borrows will be 5,000. Again, a basic concept of uh, compound interest is used here where we find out the effective rate. Once this is done, all we are doing is writing one equation and calculating percentage. Therefore, easy question. The attempt time might be a little higher, maybe about two odd minutes, but definitely a question that can be looked at in the exam. A sum of money placed at compound interest doubles itself in four years. So if we start with principal in the next four years, it will become 2p. Money doubles itself. In how many years will it amount to four times itself? Now, if we had started with 2p in the next four years, this would have become 4p. If we start with 100 rupees, it becomes 200. So if we start with 200 rupees, it will become 400. So let's take it here and place it in front of 2p. If we start with p rupees, in four years, it becomes 2p. And therefore, in the next four years, 2p will double and become 4p. So from p to 4p, the total time taken will be 4 plus 4. That is 8 years. And that becomes the answer. Again, uh, the question is not difficult if we know what to do about the question. But otherwise, as a modern level of question in terms of concept, it is not the first level concept. But uh, solving time is not high. So if you know what to do, definitely something that can be done. Otherwise, uh, we'll be forming equations which might take a bit of time. There is 60% increase in, in an amount in six years at simple interest. Suppose we start with rupees 100 as principal. Suppose there is 60% increase in the amount. Therefore, the amount will be rupees 160. 60% 60 of 100 is 60, so it becomes 160. That means the simple interest will be the difference, which is rupees 60. So we can say simple interest is equal to principal into time into sorry into rate into time upon 100. So if we solve this, we get R is equal to 60 by 6, which is 10. So the effective rate in the first case was 10%. Again, if we look at the question or the statement again, we realize we do not have to do all of this. If the interest rate is 60% in six years, we can directly, in simple interest, you can directly say the rate per, year, rate per year will be 60 by 6, which is 10%. What will be the compound interest of rupees 12,000 after three years? At the same rate, we have to find the compound interest after three years at 10%. See, at 10%, uh, three years, simple interest will be 30%. 30% 30 of 12,000 is 3,600. 3, uh, 36. Compound interest will be more than that. So these two options will not happen. This is a option which is very large. So the ideal answer seems to be 3,972. Uh, now, if you look at compound interest for three years, in the first year at 10% on 12,000, compound interest will be 1,200. In the second year, uh, we'll get a 12, the principal was 12,000. So 10% of that is 1,200. In the second year, we'll get 1,200 plus 10% on this first year interest, which is which will be 120. In the third year, we'll get 12,000 on principal, 120 on this, 120 on this, therefore 240. And 10% of 120, 12 rupees on this. So the overall principal will, uh, overall interest will be 3600 plus this becomes 360 plus 12. So 360, 12, 2739, 3972. Or what we, have, what we could have done is we could have said that the amount becomes 12,000 into 1 plus 10 upon 100 raised to power 3 which is 12,000 into 1.1 Q oh, uh, minus the principal will be the interest. 1.1 cube, 11 cube is 1331. So this is 1.331 minus 12,000. And therefore this will be 12,000 into 0 0.331. If we calculate, uh, multiply this, you'll still get 3972. Again, uh, there are two levels of the question involved, but both the levels are direct. Uh, formula based. So I'm saying easy to moderate. Moderate because there are two concepts involved. So solution time, if done properly, should not be more than uh, two minutes unless we get stuck with the equations where we end up wasting too much time. But otherwise, it's an easy to moderate question in terms of concept. In how many years will rupees 2000 principal amount to 2420 amount at 10% rate compound interest? I can just put in the formula amount is equal to principal 
into 1 plus rate upon 100 raised to power time. So this becomes 2420 upon 2000 is equal to 1 plus 10 upon 100 becomes uh, 1 by 10. So we can write this as 1 plus 1 by 10 raised to power t. 0, 0 cancelled, 2 cancelled. So this becomes 1 to 1 upon 100 is equal to 11 by 10 raised to power t. 1 to 1 is 11 by 10 whole squared. Base the same. Therefore, power also has to be same. Hence, t is equal to 2. And that becomes the answer. Without a doubt, one of the easiest questions, direct application of compound interest formula. Definitely something should that should be done in the exam. If you are able to spot the 1 to 1 here very quickly, then uh, getting to 2 will not even take barely a few seconds. A person deposited a sum of 6,000 in a bank at 5% simple interest. 6,000 at 5% SI. Another man deposited 5,000 at 8% CI. After two years, the difference in interest will be so the, the interest for the first person will be principal into rate into time upon 100. 5% for two years is simply 10%. And therefore, 10% of 6,000, which will be 600. This will be a simple interest for the first person. For the second person, compound interest, we are calculating compound interest 8% on 5,000. In the first year, 8% of 5,000 will give us 8 fives are 40. So 400 rupees. In the second year, we will get 400 on the principal plus 8% of 400 extra interest, which will be 32 rupees. So the compound interest is 832. The difference therefore will be 832 minus 600, which is 232. Now in terms of uh, concept, it's an easy question. Calculation might take a bit of time. We could also have used the concept of uh, uh, the successive interest rate here and said the overall interest will be 8 plus 8 plus 8 into 8 upon 100, which would give us the rate as 16.64%. 164 of 5000 could have been calculated as 832. That will also give us the answer. Multiple ways of going about the question. The calculation time might be a little high, and therefore I'm saying moderate. Otherwise, conceptually not very difficult. A certain sum of money amounts to uh, rupees 2200 at 5% simple interest. Amount rate and rupees 2320 amount rate at 8% simple interest in the same period. The difference is 120. Difference in rate is 3%. The principle is same. Certain sum. So... I can say that 120 should be 3% of T over a period of time. 4, 3, 120. This is a very good chance the answer will be 4. Simple in the same period. In the same period. Find the period. Okay. Now, in the first case, you can say principal plus simple interest will be 2200. Uh, so, so principal plus P into R into T upon 100. We don't know the P or the T. Is equal to 2200 is the first equation. In the, in the similar sense, P plus P into 8 into T upon 100. The principal and time both are same. It's 2320. Uh, this is equation 1. This is equation 2. We find out 2 minus 1. P minus P 0. Here we will have 20 P. Here, no, here we will have 5 PT. Here we will have 8 PT. The difference will be 3 into P into T upon 100. This will be equal to uh, 1 to 0. 1 to 0. Uh, this becomes 40. So PT comes out to 4000. Now if we substitute that value, say in the first equation, P plus PT. 4000 into 5 upon 100 is equal to 2 to 0, 0. 0, 0, cancel. 5, 4, 0 will be 200. So, P plus 200 is equal to 2200, which means P is equal to 2000. We have to find the time. And 2, 2, 2. 
and therefore if we substitute that here we will get 2000 into t is equal to 4000 so time will be two years and that becomes the answer i was expecting four to be the answer option a which means uh, uh, the time period in both the cases two years again as far as the question is concerned i think not very difficult in terms of writing the equation but the solution can take time and therefore, I'm saying moderate and the overall solution time will also uh, reach about two and a half to three minutes. Therefore, a moderate question. On what sum of money, the difference between simple interest and compound interest for two years at 5% is rupees 63. Now, the difference between CI and SI for two years is simply given by P R square upon 100 square where P is the principal, R is the rate. Here, the difference given to us is 63. We have to find the principal rate is 5%. So 5 into 5 upon 100 into 100. Direct formula, uh, 5, 20 is our 100, 5, 4 is our 20. Uh, we cross multiply, P is equal to 63 into 4 into 100. Uh, 63 into 4 will be 252, 25200 0, 0 becomes the answer. Direct application of a formula, therefore an easy question. Solving time also will not be very uh, high, not more than at least 90 odd seconds. So certainly a doable question. A sum of 13360 was borrowed at 8.7 principal rate per annum compound interest paid back in two years in two equal installments. What was the amount of each installment? <clears throat> okay. So here what we can do is we can either equate the, so the, the principal was borrowed at 133600. It will get interest on two years. Uh, there was X rupees paid after first year, X rupees paid after the second year. We can either take this amount back by dividing by the multiplying factor and equate at this point, or we can take all the money forward. I'm taking it forward. The principal after two years at compound interest will be worth 13360 into 1.0875 whole square. The first installment, which is taken one year forward, will get interest for one year. This will be x into 1.0875. 1 plus 8.75 upon 100. This X will be as it is. So the value of money after two years, this is end of year one, this is end of year two, should be same. The money that is borrowed and the money that is lent. And therefore, from here we can write X is equal to 13360 into 1.0875 whole squared upon 10875 plus 1, 2.0875. This becomes the value that we have to find out. Uh, 0, 8, 7, 5. 0, 8, 7, 5. If we try to break 1.0875, I think it comes to my head. Uh -huh. Again, uh, to solve this, we will have to do something. Multiply 1.805. Or if we work with fractions, 100 divided by 8.75 also will be nothing. 32 and 3, 27, 37. Again, now I'm, I'm keying this value in the uh, in the calculator. This works out to 7569. Again, ID, that is what I, I would have done in the exam as well. Uh, because CAT has the calculator, and therefore option B becomes the answer. Now, uh, now these kind of questions are a problem because the uh, values are not something that can be operated easily. If we actually sit down to calculate this, the calculation time will be beyond three and a half or four minutes. And therefore, I'm saying this kind of a question will be a moderate level of question for me, not something that I would, that I would look to do in the exam. The compound interest in a certain sum of money for two years at 5% is 410. The simple interest in the same sum of same sum at the same rate for the same time is. Uh, we can look at uh, comparing SI and CI basically. Now, if we look at compound interest at 5%, so 5% is uh, 1 by 20. 
suppose the principle that we are looking at is uh, 400 x okay which means the compound interest for the first year will be 1 by 20 of 400 x which is 20 x in the second year it will be 1 by 20 of 400 x p percent 20 x plus 1 by 20 of 20 x because in compound interest we get interest on interest so therefore, the overall uh, compound interest will be 40 plus 1, 41x. If we look at simple interest, simple interest will be the same as it is compound interest of the first year. And the second year, first year, simple interest is same. So simple interest should be 40x. Now, according to the question, 41x is equal to 410. The compound interest that we get, therefore, x should be 10. The simple interest that is required is 40x, which is 40 into 10. Therefore, 400 rupees. Option A. Again, not a very difficult question, especially if you know how to compare CISI. Even if you form equations, should not take too much time. Uh, and therefore, I'm saying an overall easy question, uh, but maybe uh, two odd minutes should be required to solve the question. So easy to moderate as far as the overall level of difficulty is concerned. Now, if you look at the overall analysis, as I said initially, overall level of difficulty is easy to monitor because there were clearly some easy questions or direct questions which could have been attempted. Uh, if I had to choose seven questions, which which ones would they be? For me, they will be one, two, three, four, five, eight, and ten. Uh, so just to have a look at those questions: one, two, three, four, five, eight, and ten. Would I have done this direct application of formula similarly here? Direct application of formula. Uh, this is also uh, something that I've done earlier and therefore uh, I will typically tend to do these in examinations because calculation is very limited. I would have done this direct application of formula would have done this. This was one of the easiest questions in the set. Uh, here there would have been a problem because there was a comparison since I'm choosing the seven easiest. I might have left this. Uh, this uh, equations were to be formed. So one of the uh, higher difficulty level questions in the set. I would have done this because, again, direct application of formula. Uh, ninth, calculation was a problem, so I would have left it in the exam. Tenth, uh, especially uh, ninth, if, if it is CAT, might still have tried it, but if it's a non-CAT examination where the calculator is not there, I definitely would have left this kind of a question. Uh, would have done this because, again, I've, I've done uh, similar questions earlier. There might be students who might uh, choose question 6 over question 10, this question over question 10, but again, uh, seven odd questions. So for me, it would be one, two, three, four, five, eight, ten. You might, there might be students who would say one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. But in any case, about seven questions definitely could have been done.